All right, hey guys, welcome back to another Marvel Legendary video. Today's the day. We got revelations. Now, I want to apologize because this is a day later than the latest I said it would be, but it came from FedEx, and FedEx did it to where they gave it to USPS, so it got to, to where I live on Friday, right after I made that video, and then it took all the way until today for FedEx to give it to USPS and then USPS to deliver it. So I'm super sorry that it took so long, but we're gonna we're gonna unbox this now. Now comes in the same size box as uh, a normal 100, like a normal small set. But this is 200 cards, so it's twice as big. Um, I haven't looked through any of the cards except the ones in the previews. I did get the last hero spoiled for me. Um, not you know I was just looking online and looking on the forum or whatever, and it just popped up. So. If you haven't seen that last hero yet, we'll look at it together. But let's first take a look at the instructions, or the rule set. So we've got, this is the main blurb from, I think it's probably a little more, but from what we've seen before. So let's take a look at the keywords. First one we have is hyperspeed. So the keyword represents like heroes like Quicksilver and Speed move blindly fast, battering opponents with a flurry of unpredictable strikes. It also includes hyperspeed flight, hypersonic cannons, and hyperfast volleys of arrows. Some heroes say things like hyperspeed reveal a uh, five. This means reveal the top five cards of your deck. You get plus one attack for each card with an attack icon you reveal this way. Discard all those cards. It doesn't matter what cards, what numbers, uh, number, what numbers are on the attack icon. Ignore uh, recruit icons and other icons on revealed cards like you know piercing energy. Uh, when building a deck with a lot of hyperspeed, you want to build as many attack icon cards as possible to get. Um, including cards with zero plus printed with their attack icon. So that's really great because you can, those cards, you know, depending on what part of the game they're in, um, they still have some benefit when it comes to the hyperspeed stuff. It's kind of thick, which is nice. Um, you, can clever, you can also cleverly use abilities that let you set up the top card of your deck to have an attack icon right before you play a card with hyperspeed, like a wall crawl would be a great idea. Um, you know, you're putting it, you're recruiting it, and then it might just be beneficial to discard that card for your next turn rather than um, also, I believe the uh, Hulk's, some of his, uh, like, Gladiator Hulk stuff, his uh, stuff that's, like, this card's discarded. I don't know if it has to be discarded from your hand or discarded, period. Uh, it, goes to, it goes back to your hand, so you could discard it for that. Um, I believe it just says discarded, and this explicitly says discard those cards. So, that would, and I think uh, Gambit has effects like that, so that would be, his Uncommon has that effect, so that would be great for that. Um... Some cards explicitly say uh, hyperspeed 3 for recruit, which means real top three cards of your deck. You get plus one, plus one recruit for each card with a uh, recruit icon you reveal this way. So pretty much the same thing. And then um, if you reveal one card with recruit and two cards with recruit attack, you'd get both. If it's hyperspeed for attack and recruit. So pretty straightforward. Now I understand why people are saying that you're going to need a lot of... Make sure you keep some D20s on hand because you're going to end up producing a lot of attack or recruit. All right, so next keyword is Dark Memories. So some villains and master plans have the keyword Dark Memories. This means you get plus one for each hero class among cards in your discard pile. So they can be up plus five. Uh, this would be pretty hard. Sorry if it's kind of windy. Um, I'm outside. It's literally the most beautiful day of all of 2019. Um, but this plus five would be the most, because it's heroes, not classes. I'm sorry, it's classes, not colors. So plus five is the most that they could get, and it even says it here. Um, so multicolored heroes or split cards end up being kind of hard against you when this happens because they count for both. It doesn't matter how many of each you have. Um, it's just so that they're in there. So you're going to have five, shield gray, five gray shield heroes, four yellow heroes, and three green heroes, and it's only plus two. Recruiting heroes and hyperspeed and other abilities may increase. Recruiting heroes and hyperspeed may increase the ability increase the dark memory bonus. So likewise, if you draw or reveal enough cards that have to be shuffled into your discard pile, you can drop it to zero, which is great. Um, you can minimize uh, the attack of the hood and his gang by building a deck with few hero classes or maximize the attack of heroes with dark memory by recruiting many heroes. And then double dark memory obviously doubles the bonus. We have Last Stand here. Uh, the new keyword represents how Dark Avengers fight hardest with, when they're alone. So some villains say Last Stand, which means this gets plus one attack for each empty city space, uh, empty space in the city. So some Captain, some Captain Marvel and Photon cards also say Last Stand. 
represents how they fight their hardest near the end of the battle. Likewise, this means you get plus one attack for each empty city space. So, double last stand also is a thing. We've got locations. So we have, um, it's a new kind of thing for, the car, for this game. When a location is played from the villain deck, place it above the near city space that does not have a location. Leave enough room that a villain can be moved through the city as normal. Once placed, locations don't move. Villains don't push locations forward. You can have a uh, you can have a villain in a city space that has a location above it. Most locations specify special abilities that happen when you fight villains in the space. There's a villain in the space. Some villains and masterminds say they become stronger based on locations. You can fight a location by spending a listed attack. Okay. Um, if a new location is played and every city space has a location, then KO the location with, with the lowest attack to make room. If Ty, the current player, chooses, uh, this might KO the newly placed location or one of the previously placed. In solo mode, when locations tell you each other player, you do it to yourself. Pretty straightforward to solo. There's some clarifications here. Locations don't count as villains, so anything that has to do with that, probably, that, that doesn't count. Um, special abilities that mention villains don't work on locations. Um, if a mastermind or scheme destroys a city space with the location, KO that location. A city space with the location above it and no villains will count as empty for abilities like Last Stand. Also for like patrol, when you patrol a city space and there's just a location there, it counts as empty. Um, each mastermind in the set has at least one tactic that becomes a location. You win when the tactics have there are no face down left under. You don't have to defeat all the tactic cards and, and that have turned to locations. That's good. Uh, locations don't capture bystanders, but some abilities make can make them capture bystanders rescue them when you fight the location we have uh double-sided transforming schemes we'll take a look at that mandarin mandarin's uh rings is the first henchman group to have uh 10 unique cards uh this is so this is awesome so all right so we got through the rules and let's look at the, the the good stuff let's open the packaging here All right, nope, don't want to bend this. I'm gonna shove this in here so the wind doesn't blow the trash away. All right, so, okay, good. They're, with the big box sets, you know, they split the cards up so that they're not, um, they're not like with their characters. So this time we'll get to see all the characters the way they are. All right, so we got first is we got um, Scarlet Witch. First common here is Hexbolt. It is a uh, two recruit. And then you, if you play a blue hero, Discard the top card of any player's deck. You may play a copy of that card. Nice. That's a really good common. That's just two cost, one attack. We have um, After Reality. Uh, it's a two recruit, three cost. Reveal the top card of your deck. Discard it, put it back, and then Dark Memories. So you have potential to boost some attack there. It's a really nice card. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Uh, we have Chaos Magic. Reveal the top card of the hero deck. You may play a copy of the card this turn. When you do, put that on the bottom. So that's really nice. It's almost like uh, Rogues, except it's the card on top of the deck rather than the hero deck rather than uh, uh, one of the cards you've played. So she plays, she makes copies. Um, and then Warp, Time and Space. Real top three cards of the hero deck. Put one of them in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom or top of the uh, hero deck in any order. And if you play three Avengers heroes, Dark Memories. That's really cool because then you could set up for one of these other cards. So that's Scarlet Witch. Let's look at Quicksilver here. So first common is too fast to see. It's got hyperspeed three for recruit, but if you play a yellow hero, he has hyperspeed for recruit and attack. That's awesome. That's going to be really good. It's going to be really, really good. We have perpetual motion two, but plus hyperspeed four. That's going to be really good too, because if you really boost your thing up, your deck up with attack cards, that's a, and you play green, you know you're. That's six attack, like for four costs. That's crazy. Um, jittery and patience. It's uh, his uncommon. Uh, look at the top card of your deck. Discard it, put it back, and then you may KO the card you discarded this way with uh, playing a yellow here. And he's mostly yellow, so that makes a lot of sense. It's a great card. Gets rid of stuff. Around the uh, world punch. Hyperspeed your entire deck. Your <laughs> entire. Whoa, hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hyperspeed your entire remaining deck. Don't reshuffle. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. And then it says, uh, if you play four Avengers heroes, before you do that, you may disc you may put your discard pile on top of your deck. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. That is wild. And you know, 
Shokasta may be interesting to play with him because she shuffles your discard pile back in and everything like that. That is crazy. That is actually super crazy. I want to see if I can bust out some crazy stuff with that. That is absolutely insane. That is so, so crazy. Holy cow. All right. I'm kind of flabbergasted by that. Okay. Let's go on to War Machine. So we got uh, simulated target practice. You three attack. Or I'm sorry. Two attack, three cost. Um, you may fight a henchman from your uh, victory pile. If you do, KO it and rescue a bystander. And you do its fight effect. So you can... So basically swap out the victory point value and then get its effect twice, which is awesome because then it lets you a lot of the, you know, the bystanders KO hero or whatever. That's awesome. That's really, really great. And you don't suffer from the victory, like losing victory points because you're going to re basically replenish them. His other common, uh, mil military industrial complex. Whenever you defeat a villain this turn, you get plus one recruits. Pretty straightforward. I like that. We've got uh, Hypersonic Cannon. He's got Hypersonic or Hyperspeed 5. You mean KOA card from your discard pile. That's great, too. Man, these cards look so great so far. And then finally, we have Overwhelming Firepower. Whenever you defeat a villain or Mastermind, this turn, draw a card and rescue a bystander. Pretty straightforward. Great. 5 attack. It's 8 recruits. Very good. Straightforward uh, card. I like that. I like War Machine a lot. I'm really impressed by these heroes so far. I'm really, really impressed by them. All right, next we have Photon. Infrared Conversion. Uh, to play this, you must discard a card. Draw two cards. So, um, interesting. Um, you'd basically... Because you have to discard a card. So you're like, your card, you're like... Uh, you, if you start with six cards, to play this and discards two cards, so you're kind of equal, equaling out. But with that, you can kind of manipulate... You know, you can boost up some things, and then you can... Um, you can... Uh, you know, maybe get rid of something you don't want for something else. So, let's see. We got Ultraviolet Radiation. To play this, you must discard a card. And then she has Hyperspeed 3. So, this must be her kind of theme with her things. Um, her Uncommon, Light the Way. You can you get plus one for each card you discard uh, from your hand this turn. So, that seems to be her theme. She probably worked well with Gambit. To, or, the, I mean, I guess you're discarding a lot initially. But if you get his Uncommon, it'll make things a little better. And then, we finally, we have... Uh, Corviscating Vengeance. I hope I said that right. And then it's six attack, and then if you play two Avengers heroes, it's last stand. So it could be a pretty powerful card. If you notice, though, that the, the first ones we've seen, their superpowers activated by multiple uh, Avengers heroes, which is uh, usually we see two, uh, sometimes four when it's like two colors, but that was during Secret Wars when uh, a lot of cards had multiple uh, hero classes, so it was easier to kind of pull off. But this is, yeah, this is making it... A lot harder but i think if you're recruiting stuff and things like that it's probably easier to get cards um anyway let's go into ronin we have a uh, mysterious identity ronin to, uh, as you play this card you may choose a color or team icon this card is that color and team icon uh this turn including red and avengers that's cool that's really neat it'll be really fun to, to kind of implement that in other cases um storm the arrows storm of arrows this is other common it's four cost hyper speed four and if you play a blue here you draw a card Really good. I'm always like making sure I have all my all 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 cards of each one. Uh, his uncommon is haunted by loss. He's a two attack, but he's got dark memories, so to, you know get some attack with that. Finally, we have brooding fury, dark memories, and then if you play a green hero, you dark memories again. So you could potentially boost him up ten, which would be pretty insane. Ah, so this is the hero that was. Um, the one that I didn't know that was being added that got sort of ruined for me, Darkhawk. I know nothing about this character, so feel free to tell me in the comments below anything about him, because I don't know anything about him. So, first common is a one recruit, one attack, three cost, uh, draw a card. If you play a tech hero, pretty good. Straightforward. We've got Hawk Dive here, choose attack or recruit, and then hyperspeed four. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Especially early game. Uh, if you, rec you know recruit like one or two of these at the beginning of the game, you can bust out a four recruit card. I mean, you're really likely of getting a card with recruit because you have more recruit heroes at the beginning of the game. So that's really good for early game and late game too. Even because they have both icons, you, I mean, this you can get recruit and then it doesn't. You don't suffer for it later uh, for having too much recruit because it has attack icons and you can use hyperspeed for that. That's awesome. We have uh, travel the null space. This one here is if you if the most recent hero you played this turn has an attack icon, you get plus three. I'm sorry, recruit icon, you get plus three. If it's attack, you get both. This is awesome. 
<laughs> Yo, this is awesome. What are his colors? I might have to match him with uh, with uh, Proxima Midnight, man. This is, or, or, uh, or uh, what do you call it, uh, Domino. Like, this is sick. So he can be, I mean, very, very powerful. And then we have Warflight. Uh, whenever you use Hyperspeed this turn, you get both attack. Uh, you get both uh, recruit from recruit icons, attack from attack icons. You Hyperspeed 7, and if you play two tech heroes, you Hyperspeed 9. Holy cow. They are really like, you're just pumping out damage. Damage. <laughs> like, real talk. Okay. We have... Okay, I'm going to hold these uh, bystanders off to the end. Okay, so next we have Hellcat. So, cat-like ability. It's a uh, two recruit, one attack. Choose one, draw a card, or plus one attack. That's really nice because it could be a two attack, two card, um, especially because their cards look like they're yellow. Um, and Wolverine, like this is a pretty good Wolverine because you can get like some early two cost cards and then do some do some stuff with that. That's really nice. Um, part time PI, if you're the top card of any deck, if it's not a scheme twist, you may put it on the bottom. And then if you play a yellow hero, you can choose to draw a card or get one recruit. So it can make it a three recruit, which is nice. And the part time PI thing, it gives you basically, it's almost like, um, it's almost like uh, investigate. So that's kind of a fun, kind of a fun uh, thing there. We've got Demon Sight as our uncommon, guess villain, uh, bystander, striker twist, and reveal the top card of the villain deck. If you guess right, you get plus two. And if you play an Avengers hero, if it was a villain, you may uh, fight it this turn. So you basically want to combo, you know, like, you know, one of these with a yellow hero, then this, and then you can get the plus two for guessing the top card correctly. Finally, second chance at life. We have if a Master Strike or Scheme Twist would occur, you may discard this card from your hand. If you do draw three cards and shuffle that striker twist back into the villain deck, that's really nice because you can pro you can prolong the end of a game uh, for at least a turn if you discard her, draw your cards, and then you know like if if it's like the next strike is like or the next twist is like oh you're gonna lose the game if you play this, so that's really really nice. So now we're gonna open the second pack of cards. I really like what I see so far, and I'm super super excited to play. So let's take a look here. Um, we're gonna have speed next. So when I first saw speed, I kind of I just mistook it for Quicksilver because it's just a running man in a green. Well, this is green. He's blue suit. So, all right. First, uh, his common speed is accelerate. Um, is a two recruit, and then it's hyperspeed two. But if you play a yellow hero, it's hyperspeed hyperspeed six. Man, that's crazy. That is damage. This whole set is, should be called Legend Marvel Legendary Damage. Uh, the next hero you recruit this turn goes on top of your deck, so that's cool. So it almost basically gives it wall crawl. Well, I mean, the one card that turn, not the card itself. Um, yeah, and it's two recruit, one attack, so it's pretty good. And then we have it's uncommon race to the rescue. Choose a hero class, uh, real top card of your deck. If the hero class is you, if the hero class you named, if it is the hero class you named, draw it. Otherwise, put it on top or bottom. So that's really cool. Um, especially sets up with his common. Finally, um, we have his uh, Break the Sound Barrier Rare. Look at the top six cards of your deck, draw two of them, put the rest back on the bottom or top in any order, and then you can hyperspeed six if you play a red hero. So, really good, really nice. Um, oh, we're on the last hero. One that I'm actually very excited for, which is Captain Marvel. And this costume is sick. Like, it's so dope. I didn't even know that there was a costume like this. And the Sword of Shield... So Captain Marvel, Agent of Shield, first card, her common is a three recruit, I'm sorry, three cost, two recruit card. You play uh, three or four shield cards, you draw a card. Could be really, you know, it's done very easily beginning game. Next card is uh, Radiant Blast. If you draw any extra cards this turn, you get plus one, so that's really easy to do. We have her uncommon being do uh, Dominate the Battlefield. She get, If you play a blue hero, she has Last Stand. And then finally, we have her Higher, further, faster, which they had to do from the movie, of course. I choose one, draw three cards, or last stand, and then you play two green heroes. Instead, do both. And her cards are green and blue, so you could actually play her with the other Captain Marvel card to get, um, you know, to utilize some of her abilities because they're both all green and blue. So let's take a look at, we're going to take a look at the first villain group here, being Hood's Gang. Okay, we're going to Hood's Gang here. So it looks like there are... Five unique cards because one's a location. So we have, um, I'm sorry, one, two, yeah, five. 
So we have the Brothers Grimm villain. It's two to fight Brothers Grimm. You must also discard two identical cards. You may KO a card from your discard pile when you fight him. So that can be pretty easily at the beginning because you have the shield cards, but maybe as it gets on, it may be a little more harder. You have Cancer, Dark Memories. So remember, he's going to get plus one for each um, different color class in your discard pile. Ambush. Each player reveals... No, each player that reveals any cards in their discard pile gains a wound. Wait, each player that has any cards in their discard pile gains a wound. So, more than likely, you're getting a wound. Um, uh, Chemistro. Dark Memories. Again, um, fight, exchange a card from... Uh, you played this turn with a card in the HQ with the same or lower cost. The card you gain goes to your discard pile. That's interesting. Um, we have Madam Mask. Dark Memories, Ambush, Guess Villain, Bystander, Strike, or Twist, then reveal the top part of the Villain deck. If you guess wrong, play that card. And then you KO one here as you defer. That's rough. Hopefully you can get that uh, Hellcat card to come help you out. And then finally we have the Dark Dimension Location. Uh, villains who get Dark Memories. Villain here gets Dark Memories. Villain who already have it get it again. And then Fight, you take another turn after this one. And it's nine. Holy cow. Holy cow. So that's really rough. All right, let's take a look at the next set here, Lethal Legion. Uh, we have Swordman. He gets plus three where there's a carnival location in the city. While well, there's a carnival location in the city, so it doesn't matter where it is, he just gets the plus three. Ambush, Swordsman in each location in the city capture a bystander. We have Carnival. Uh, uh, carnival of Wonders. Are they all? No. Well, there's a carnival location, so maybe... Okay, well, oh, wait, maybe he's paired up with it. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player chooses a bystander from the victory pile to be captured by Carnival of Wonders. So, it just takes villain, it takes uh, bystanders from there, and then whoever defeats this can get all the bystanders that's captured. We have Power Man. Um, Power Man gets plus three for the pri a prison location in the city, and then he has an escape effect. Each player puts a villain from the victory pile into the escape pile or gains a wound. Here's the Raft Prison. So whenever you fight a villain here, each other player puts a villain from their victory pile into the escape pile, into the, oh gosh, or gains a wound. So that one you kind of want to deal with. We got M'Baku, he gets plus three, oops, plus three for, the, if there's a cult, a location in the city, and then each player reveals their hand, discards a uh, tech hero, same a fight, uh, I mean, sorry, escape effect. We have White Gorilla Cult, uh, whenever you fight a villain here, each player reveals their hand or discards a uh, tech card, so it's kind of the same. Finally, we have Living Laser. He gets plus three while there's a mage location in the city. Each player reveals a blue hero gains a wound. Ranged. Is that ranged? I don't remember. I thought maybe... Yeah, I think it's ranged. And then we have uh, Laser Maze. When you fight a villain here, each other player reveals a ranged hero or gains a wound. So same kind of thing. So seems like it could be pretty annoying. Hopefully the cicada noise isn't too loud. All right. Next we have Army of Evil. Blackout. Ambush. Each player reveals a ranged hero or discards a card. You fight and draw two cards. We have two of those. We've got Claw. Nice. Claw captures a tech hero or ranged hero that costs five or less from the HQ, and then you, you gain that whenever you defeat him. We have Mr. Hyde. Nice. Um, while in the streets, in the banks, this card is named Dr. Calvin Zabo. Uh-oh. Nice. That's actually super cool. <laughs> you can spend... Um, and you, you must spend a recruit to fight him instead of attack, and then you can KO one hero. So he switches between, you have to do recruit or attack. That's pretty neat. We have Count Neferia. Ambush. All players reveal their hand unless all those revealed cards... Wait, all players reveal their hands. Unless all those cards together include every class, each player gains a wound. Oh, man, that's going to be a rough solo. <laughs> that's going to be a really rough solo. Finally, we have Dome of Dark Force Location. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player reveals a tech or a ranged hero or discards a card, and when you defeat it, you get to draw two cards. So it's basically like uh, this this thing here. So the final um, villain group is going to be the Dark Avengers. So we have Dark Spider-Man, which is Scorpion, Double Last Stand, and then. Reveal top two cards of your deck. KO one of them to cost two or less. Put the rest back in any order. So at least it doesn't do anything to the other other thing, whatever. We have Captain Marvel. A last Stand. Ambush. If any other Dark Avengers are in the city, each player gains a wound. 
Uh, we have Dark Mist Marvel. Last Stand. Each other player discards two cards and draws a card. Dark Hawkeye. We have Last Stand. KO one of your heroes and choose one. Each other player KOs one of their heroes. Each other player gains a zero cost card from their discard pile. I'm sorry, for the KO pile. So that's pretty cool. It's almost, it's a kind of a play on um, his draw. You know, draw everybody discards a card, everybody draws a card. One from the normal Hawkeye. Dark Wolverine. Another Wolverine. Uh, last Stand Ambush. Each player reveals a yellow hero and gains a wound. And then, and then escape same effect and shuffle Wolverine back in the villain deck. We have Ares, Last Stand, and we fight him, KO one of your heroes. They also are high victory points. We have Sentry as a villain, a hero, and a mastermind now. <laughs> well, in the banks or the streets, this card becomes the Void. It gets plus five attack, and it gets fight, KO up to two cards from your discard pile. So he's going to be 12. Great. Okay. And then finally, we have Sentry's Watchtower as a location. Uh, villains here get last stand who they get a double if they already have last stand and then you fight you can KO you gain a hero from the HQ that's under this space HQ space under that you get the hero so those are the villains they seem pretty hard they seem like they're a lot of attack but these guys seem like they can produce a ton of attack so it kind of balances out we're gonna take a look at the first um, take a look at the first uh, henchman group which again is the first uh, henchman group with unique cards which is going to be the t Mandarin's Ten Rings. So we have um, I'm not going to pronounce these because I don't know how to pronounce them all. So the first one here the White Light draws a card the Flame Blast. You may KO a card from your discard pile. Impact Beam. Influence the Impact Beam you get plus one recruit. Uh, Liar the the Mento Intensifier. Okay. Uh, look at the top card Look at the top card of another player's deck. Say, is it good or bad? That player puts it in their discard pile, or puts it in your discard pile, or in their discard pile. Okay, well, that's weird. Um, Lightning, the Electro Blast. Uh, reveal top card of your deck. You may KO it. Um, Nightbringer, the Black Beam. Reveal the top two, three cards of the villain deck. You may defeat a villain. You play. You, I mean, you reveal with two victory points or less. Do its fight effect. Put the rest back in any order. Um, Remaker, the Matter Rearranger. You may choose a card from your hand or discard pile. The player to your right puts it in their hand. Okay. That's cool because then you can force it to, to give yourself a card from your discard pile um, for solo. We have um, Spectre, the Dis Disintegration Beam, KO one of your heroes. We have Spin the Vortex Beam, reveal the top six cards of your deck, discard all that cost zero, and then put the rest back in any order. And then finally we have... Uh, zero the ice blast choose a card you played this turn that costs zero when you draw a new hand at the end of your turn add that card to your hand as an extra card okay so that wound is coming back to me i'm kidding finally the other henchman group we have is going to be hydra base it's a henchman location hydra base gets plus two but there's a villain here and then when you fight it you KO one of heroes and they're all the same so instead of actually henchmen they're going to just be locations all right, let's take a look at the masterminds. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the Grim Reaper. So Grim Reaper here, he gets plus one for each location in the city. So he can be up to five. So he can be up to 13. Master Strike, this, this strike enters as a seven attack graveyard location that says this, it gets plus two while there's a villain here and it's worth five victory points. So he's, oh, that's kind of rough. Here is his epic side. Uh, he gets plus two for each location in the city. The strike enters the city as an eight attack graveyard location that gets three attack while there's a villain there. It's worth three victory points then. And then if there's at least three locations in the city, each player gains a wound. So while that seems pretty difficult, I think it's probably one of the easier epic masterminds. We'll take a look at the... Uh... Oh no, they're all, they're all named to boost his villain group. Uh, okay, so... Um, <laughs> I got bamboozled. So, first tactic is Carnival of Concussions. Um, fight. If there is not already a location, if this is not already a location, draw three cards, and this card enters the city as a location with the ability. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player KOs a bystander from the victory pile. And if you look, yeah, like they said, they're named after like Colt, Carnival, Maze, um, and Prison to boost their other card, the villain group. Um, this is KO up to two cards from your discard pile, and it enters. And then whenever you fight a villain here, each other player reveals their hand and discards an on-grade card. This is for Cult of Skulls. Maze the Bones. Look at the top four cards of your deck. KO any number of them and put the rest back in any order. 
then at the center of the city is a location. And the, okay, and this is all predicated on that it's not already a location. So once it becomes a location, it loses this part. And then its ability when it's a location is when you fight a villain here, each other player gains a wound. And then finally we have, um, you get plus five recruit, and then it enters as a location. And then whenever you fight a villain here, each other player puts a villain from the victory pile into the escape pile. Okay, so his tactics make him a lot harder. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the Hood with his guns, weird looking guy. Hood's gang is his uh, dark memories, and Hood's gang is his uh, always leads group. Master Strike, each player reveals the top six cards of their deck. Discard all non-gray heroes revealed and put the rest back in any order. That's rough. His epic side is 10, double dark uh, memory. And then each player discards their hand, then shuffle six random gray cards from the discard pile to form their deck. Oh, they discard their deck. I'm sorry. They discard their deck, then shuffle six random gray cards from their... Oh my gosh. That sounds like a rough, rough day. And then more than likely, he's going to be... Anywhere from, he's going to be anywhere from 12 to 20 attack after that. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Um, fight. Each other player reveals their hand and discards a non-gray hero. So that's one tactic. The next tactic, focus magic through guns. Each other player reveals a red hero or discards a card. And each other player reveals a tech hero and gains a wound. Or gains a wound. That's rough. Um, I don't know how to say that. Something to Dormammu. Pain. I don't know how the, those letters form together to make a sound fight each other player discards their deck oh gosh because that affects you too in solo that's your thing and then the hoods warehouse is a tactic location fight this not already location rescue four bystanders and then enters a city with the ability when you fight a villain here play another card from the villain deck oh my goodness that sounds terrible i'm really excited to see how these locations are in practice because <laughs> i wouldn't be avoid fighting people there finally we have the mandarin the Mandarin, uh, he gets plus, uh, all Mandarin rings get plus one. The Mandarin gets minus one for each Mandarin among players' di uh, victory piles and minus three in solo because you're only going to have three in solo. So he could be minus nine rather than minus ten in, in regular play. Um, the Mandarin rings, oh, each player chooses a Mandarin ring from the victory pile to enter the city. Any player who didn't have a ring gains a wound instead. His double, or his epics, holy crap, I just... I just saw this. I about died. <laughs> that might be the highest. I think that's the highest printed attack of any mastermind in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. I think because Epic uh, Fin Fang Foom, I think, is 24. So this is the highest printed straight off the bat. So all mana rings at plus two. He gets minus six for each one in solo, so he can be minus 18 uh, in solo if you can take out three of them, which would make him much more manageable. Each player chooses a mana ring from their victory pile to enter the city. Any player who does not means a wound and puts on top of their deck. I mean, that seems hard at first, but it may not be too bad. Um, I say that and then get destroyed. So we have the first one is Circles Unbroken. Draw a card for each Mandarin ring in your victory pile. Uh, we have Intertwining Powers. Each other player with at least, without at least two mana rings of victory pile gains a wound. Um, each other player reveals a tech hero or puts a mana ring from their victory pile into their escape pile and then the final one is fight if this is not a location KO up to two heroes KO, KO up to two of your heroes this card enters as a location with the ability whenever you fight a villain here each other player reveals their hand and KOs one of their non gray heroes and then you fight him you KO up to two of your heroes so yeah that sounds kind of rough all right and let's let's take a look let's take a look at the, the bystanders first and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the um, schemes First bystander, bystander is rocket tested pilot. When you rescue this bystander, choose attack or recruit, and then hyperspeed three for that icon. We have dog show judge. When you reveal this bystander, each player reveals the top card of their deck. Judge one of those cards to be the best and show. That player draws the card. That's kind of funny. Um, and we have lawyer. When you rescue this bystander, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Draw one of, draw each of them that has at least ten words of rules text. Put the rest back in any order. Numerical icons and punctuation don't count, and I'm guessing flavor text doesn't count either. So, interesting. So, like, this would be one we draw. Okay, now let's take a look at the map, the uh, schemes. These are what I'm really excited about. So we have Korvac Saga. Uh, there's eight twists. Twist, each player must discard it uh, down to four cards or KOA bystander from the victory pile to search for the Korvac entity. The scheme transforms. Then it transforms. The scheme counts as a 90... 
<laughs> Yo, this attack is crazy. The scheme counts as a 19 attack Korvac villain with 9 victory points. If you defeat Korvac, KO the Mastermind and all of its tactics. If you defeat Korvac, KO the Mastermind. And you, you win, right? Twist 2, 4, and 6. Each player discards a... Uh, um, twist each card discards a... Uh, each player discards an adventure hero, gains a wound. The scheme, then the scheme transforms. And then by uh, 8, evil wins. So you win, right? KO the Mastermind all its tactics. You win if you defeat Korvac. That's pretty funny to me. <laughs> I wish this would have came with tokens for Korvac and for uh, the um, the graveyard locations like the X-Men set did. We have House of M, so eight twist. Hero deck is four heroes, four X-Men heroes and two non-X-Men heroes or substitute with another team on both sides. Um, for all, yeah, substitute another team for all for all X-Men icons on both sides. Add 14 Scarlet Witch heroes to the villain deck. Special rules, each Scarlet Witch villain in the city is attack equal to its cost plus three. Um, if you fight one, gain as a hero. Twist, KO all non X Men hero from the HQ. If there are at least two Scarlet Witch cards in the city, the scheme transforms. Otherwise, play another card from the villain deck. House of, so it's House of M. So no more mutants. Each Scarlet Witch in the city villain is a villain with attack equal to its cost plus four. You gain it as a hero when you fight it. Twist, KO all X Men heroes from the HQ. Play another card from the villain deck. So you're KO and stuff and playing a card from the villain deck no matter what. Finally, Evil wins when the number of non-gray heroes in the KO pile is 10 plus a number of players. So if there's 11 non-gray heroes in the discard in the uh, in the KO pile, 10 plus the 10 plus double the number, so 12 for solo. That's really hard. That seems like it's really rough. Um, we have Earthquake the drains Earthquake drains the ocean for the next twi scheme. 11 twists. Put an extra villain group. Uh, there uh, special rules. There are two extra low tide city spaces on the left of the city so there are seven spaces total twist the tide rushes in the scheme transforms this side says when the evil wins when three villains per player have escaped or the villain deck runs out so three villains in solo we have special rules for when tsunami crushes the coast as this transform side the low tide bridge and city spaces no longer exist so there's three total that put the scheme on the city to mark the edge of the city on the streets to mark the edge of the city. I'm sorry. Put the scheme on the streets to mark the edge of the city. Villains and destroyed cities uh, start escaping, starting from the left. Twist the tide rushes out. The scheme transforms. Then play another card from the villain deck. And then when three villains per player have escaped, the villain deck runs out. So that's really cool because it's going to be like just an expansion of a city space. And, and so for each twist, which is interesting. Finally, we have secret Hydra corruption. Set up 30 shield officers in uh, the sh shield officer stack. One player, seven twists, two to three players, nine twists, four to five, eleven. And this is specifying 30. And I think I talked about this before. It was because we know we're getting new shield officer cards, special ones, uh, in the shield set, in the Agents of Shield set. And then that'll cause us to have to flip them face down because they'll have abilities now. So that's why it's saying 30. Um, special rules. Officers stacked next to the scheme are Hydra Sympathizers. You may pay three recruit to have the twist of... May pay three recruit to have the player of choice gain, it, gain one as a hero. Um, for each twist in the KO pile, this is when the twist happens. For each twist in the KO pile, including this one, put a shield officer uh, stack next. Put a shield officer card. Put a card from the shield officer stack. I'm sorry, next to the scheme. Then the scheme transforms, which kind of sucks because then you're like paying for re these recruits and you don't want them late game. Uh, open Hydra Evolution special rules. Officers uh, next to the scheme are three attack Hydra traders. When you fight one, return to the officer stack and KO any heroes. Okay, that's good. Twist uh, for each twist in the KO pile, including this one. Put a card from the officer stack next to the scheme. Then, if evil has not won yet, the scheme transforms. And then evil wins when there are 15 officers next to the scheme or the shield's officer stack has run out. So that there, ladies and gentlemen, 30 or 40 minutes in is Revelations. Let me know what you're most excited about in this set. Let me know actually what setup you want me to use. So which henchman, which mastermind, which scheme... Which, which all of it you want me to use, which three heroes, let me know in the comments below and I'll do that as this playthrough. I'll probably get it out on what tomorrow night or Thursday morning. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for the, today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video.